This is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to go over the biggest variations that we use at the gym with tactical and general populations and also break world records. So tune in and let's see some big variations on the bench press and how they'll make us better. The first exercise is going to be a pin press or a pause press off of these spotter pins. So what he's going to do is he's going to take the bar out, have his normal bench press technique, and he's going to go down in a controlled fashion until he touches the pin. Once he touches the pin, he's going to count for a solid second, taking away all the energy, and he's going to press from there. Now why I like this is because, one, if he gets in trouble and he gets stuck, say he's maxing himself, he can get out of it, right? But two, he doesn't need a, he doesn't need a spotter. But two, the other reason is it's, spot, it's, it's actually pausing in a weird spot, which is going to make him super strong. And although this looks like a normal bench press, it sure doesn't feel like it. So I would say to put this in, if you don't have spotters, put this in every three upwards of eight weeks. Um, change your grip positioning around. So everybody likes to put their hands where they're the strongest, but a lot of times when you train a little narrower, you increase the range of motion, therefore increase the pressing power when you move your way back out. So when I was benching... 611, I had my pinky barely covering the ring, which is pretty narrow, right? But when I trained, as you can see my thumb, how far away it is from the knurling, most of my training was here. So it was almost a good two inches in closer, four inches total. And then when I moved this back out, it was almost like I was an inch thicker. So I was used to training with that longer range of motion. This exercise built a ton of pressing power for me, but it also created a ton of pressing power without having to have spotters in case... One day I'm training by myself and I don't have my friends. The next exercise is the floor press. Now this one is a big tricep builder. And for some of you, it's going to look very similar to the exercise we just showed. But because you're stopping on your tricep and elbow, it actually wants to shut your arm down, making it very, very hard to start new energy on the way up. Where I see people mess up the floor press is that they bounce off of their elbow versus pause. That is a huge no-no in the floor press. One, because it's dangerous. Two, because it changes bar position. It could go forward, backward, any other way. But the floor press should be treated like a pause bench press with a slightly smooth eccentric phase so that you don't slam on the bone. So he's going to take it out. And then what you're going to see is he's going to try to keep his knuckles up as high as he can without twisting them too much. That's too much. There. Now he's going to go straight down. And he's going to try to keep his elbows close to his body as he goes down. Yep, straight up. What I like to use the floor press for is I like to see this positioning here. So you can see that's a good position, but you'll see a lot of people that are weaker will start doing this kind of shit right here. You want to see it squeeze, right? You want to treat it like a punch. Good. And rack. Now as you get bigger and thicker, there are some new key points that this exercise really teaches. I'm going to show you that here in a second. The other thing that I use this exercise for is, as a, a good key indicator is I try to drag my triceps down my lats. So as I'm going down, I'm trying to put my tricep right against my lat muscles to keep tight. That teaches me a really good technical form. See, if I'm trying to push my triceps into my lats, it actually lifts my chest. This is how I was able to hit really big numbers on this. So my best floor press was 625 when I weighed about 305. So coming in this way, you don't want to see any of this. You don't want to bounce off your elbow, and you want to try to push your triceps into your lats. I find that the floor press actually teaches a very good technical form for the natural bench press. The next exercise I like to use with people with limited equipment, and even we still have them at the gym even though we have fat bars, and I'm going to show you why, is because when your hands are opened up, it's harder to squeeze down on it forcing you to really think about your hands, but there's another trick that this does. So when he takes the bar out, you're going to notice that now his hands are thicker, but the bar is still thin. This is causing about a half of an inch deeper deficit on the bench press. So when he goes and touches, he's actually going to be a half an inch deeper than he would be with a normal bar. So if he was a normal bar, he'd be that thick. But because of those fat grips, he's got another half inch to an inch of motion. Now, what that's going to do is if for a lot of people that ask, hey, Matt, I, I'm not very strong off of my chest. This exercise is going to build that tremendously because of the increased range of motion at the bottom. So I find that this exercise is very hard to duplicate without these fat grip handles because you need this extra little bit here. Another way you can do it is with a duffalo squat bar. 
But in reality, this is the cheapest and easiest way to do that, creating more range of motion at the bottom and better starting strength for the bench press. Next exercise is an isolateral bench press. Now, why I like to use this exercise is that the central nervous system is actually getting stronger on the left side while working the right side and vice versa. So this exercise is really good if you've got a hurt left shoulder. We're going to show the right side today. It's actually going to help the neurological system stay strong on the opposite side. Sounds crazy, but there's a lot of data to show that. Now, the reason I like to do it only one dumbbell on a side is that his core and his legs are going to have to function way harder because he's off center by this 30 pounds, okay? These ain't 60s, these 30s, but they nice. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna do presses, go. So now what you wanna do with this is you wanna slow it down, you wanna control it, and you wanna focus actually not on the press, but locking in the core and the legs. For a lot of us in the bench press, the reason we don't get what we want is we're not stable enough. And there's a reason that a lot of huge guys now are hitting these big weights is because when you weigh 400 pounds, you have a lot more center mass stability when you're pressing. But for a lot of us, we're never gonna be that big. So we gotta have a really strong core and really strong leg drive in order to notice what we can actually bench. I find that a lot of big pressing power comes from teaching the bench press to be a full body exercise versus just an upper body exercise. And this exercise here will teach you the importance of staying tight. The next exercise that I use a ton of for warm-ups and sometimes even for max, which can be scary, so don't try it without spotters, is the chaotic bench. Now, the chaotic bench, you can hang kettlebells, plates, whatever you want. You can hang them with chains or bands, depending on how much oscillation or bouncing you want. So what he's done is we've hung 35-pound kettlebells from each side with a double red band. So this is going to cause oscillation and bouncing. So what he's going to do is he's going to take it out and he's going to try to lock in and do the same form that he was doing before. Now this exercise is a slower movement. It's more controlled. I consider this a time under tension style bench press. There's no real way to put power in this without it being super dangerous. And that's the point. The point is, is you want to increase time under tension. So I find, we haven't seen any studies on it yet, but I find that when they do study this, they're going to see an EMG activity that the rotator cuff, the shoulders, the pecs, the arms, and everything in between are all going to have to engage much, much harder to do this bench press. And I also find that he's having to stay way tighter in these areas while he's doing that bench press, or he's going to lose his stiffness and probably not be able to accomplish the lift. This exercise is huge in developing stabilization. So in closing, we've shown you a lot of different variations in the way we bench press everywhere from the floor to hand positions to different types of places where we stop the bar on pins and also to do things one arm at a time. Now, with that being said, you can do everything under the moon in those different variations, different bars, different hand positions, all of that. The key is variation is king and the ability to press every week without pain is our main goal to getting strong. If you have more questions on this, join the Patreon channel where we describe this more often and also get into the manuals where we've described it in great detail on how to follow these things and make them the best that you can be.